Well, I had to wear my thinking hat for this one. I mean, everything politically in the world at least seems like it's a mess. Although, I suppose nothing is really as it seems. And we don't know what the real motivation uh, for anything is um, anymore. Everyone has their theory about this or that. And I'm sure there's many different um, levels and different players, you know, different people. I'm sure the people in power don't all agree on um, what the future exactly should look like. Although, they probably have a general consensus. And that consensus is, is that the, <laughs> the United States is to, to rule the roost indefinitely. At the same time, from a layman's perspective, it looks like the United States is losing everything very quickly. And that might be why we see all this confusion. Uh, one thing that stands out is this idea of the IS or ISIS, which many believe uh, is something that is an outgrowth of arming the rebels in Syria, which the United States and uh, its allies um, are at least said to have done. Certainly it's been even reported in the uh, Washington Post and others to some extent that uh, there are at least plans to do this and maybe s the plans had gone ahead. But we're fairly certain that the United States, Britain, maybe France, maybe dare I say it, maybe Israel, Saudi Arabia, certainly, had been involved in um, this attempt to overthrow Assad. In fact, they outright <clears throat> had been saying that they wanted to get rid of Assad for, for quite some time. And that was their policy, which uh, one wonders why they would, uh, they would uh, choose um, people who very much uh, look and seem like Al-Qaeda uh, over Assad. They claimed that they would were backing the, the moderates. Well, even the moderates compared to Assad, from a certain point of view, don't, uh, don't seem very moderate. So, some people think that outright the U.S. created ISIS, and this has been all over the internet, who uh, Baghdadi is, was he some kind of agent of, of them, uh, and this has been discussed openly. And, uh, you know, we can't dismiss this. And uh, I tend to lean that direction. Uh, on the other hand, I think what puzzles people is the fact uh, that um, this happened so quickly. And they swept such a big area uh, so quickly. And how could that be unless it was something that was pre-planned? The reasons why it would be pre-planned, I think, are interesting. Uh, I think it's to put pressure in Iraq on Maliki, who hasn't been a very, um, you know, willing puppet for the U.S., has been too close to Iran, and get him to leave. Uh, we do have the Joe Biden plan from um, long ago, the idea that we're supposed to break Iraq up into three parts, sort of a Kurdish uh, Kurdistan, maybe a Sunni center, and maybe a Shia uh, part uh, further close to Iran. And that uh, has credence too. Whatever the reasons are, and whatever the truth is, the reality is, is that, uh, uh, that we're at least told this is all happening, and we're told uh, the, how horrible and terrible, and we can see, in many cases, how horrible and terrible uh, this ISIS is. And um, I think the idea behind that is to get Americans and others inclined to uh, go and do something about it, to go back to Iraq and reestablish Americans' presence, the West presence in Iraq yet again. 
So it's it's really a, it's really a mess, and it's really a terrible, awful thing. And I fear that there might be some kind of event, maybe here in the U.S., maybe in Europe, that at least will be blamed on ISIS. We have these statements that supposedly come from the IS of how they would like to uh, cause harm to America. Funny how if the IS is a real organization, they never seem to attack the country that they claim is their sworn enemy, which seems to be uh, Israel. They're right there in the region, but yet they keep attacking uh, hmm, other Muslims. That's a strange part of it, too, which I don't know what to make of. Maybe it's just they don't have the capability to, to do that. Maybe when, their idea is to take over uh, a large enough section and to fund themselves you know, sort of get themselves on a good footing. Who knows? But it is odd. It is odd that the very, you know, the main country that they swear is their enemy is the country that they seem to be uh, leaving alone. Then we have what's going on between Israel and Palestine, and that's such a tragedy, it's unbearable to even speak about. And um, it's such a causes such high tensions between uh, peoples to talk about it. And there's a bit of trepidation and fear because uh, we, we sort of know, some of us are inclined to think that it's not really all that safe uh, to speak out against Israel. Either way, when you look at um, the misery, the rubble that we see in, in, in Gaza, well, it's so terrible, and you got to wonder, why now? Why now? Uh, why in the middle of all this other chaos now is chosen for this? Quite, uh, quite terrible and awful. And, lastly, and most importantly, probably, the most important uh, one, in some regards, is what the U.S. is doing in Ukraine. I mean, what? Uh, who could imagine? This is uh, this is trying to start a war with a, you know, possibly the other major power on Earth, armed with nuclear weapons, armed to the teeth, and all this sort of thing, right in their backyard. It's almost like if the Russians were to come to Mexico or Canada and start trouble, which is what we did. I mean, early on, people might not remember this, but we sent people like the woman from the State Department, Victoria Newland, to drum up uh, trouble in the streets of the Maidan and to, to cause trouble, to overthrow uh, what was maybe a bad government but a legitimate government in some ways and install basically a coup government. All so we could cause trouble for the Russians and then when they react and take uh, Crimea where their military base, their naval base sits, to protect their naval base most likely, and maybe to protect citizens of the Crimea. They certainly are, seem to be worried about Russian citizens in the East, although they haven't done enough for the other Russian citizens, one could argue. And I'm certain there's people in Russia who are even more hardline than Mr. Putin himself uh, about this. So, you know, here we are, you know, basically poking a bear in the belly and expecting not to be... Um, mauled or bitten or scratched. Meanwhile, Russia has um, imposed counter sanctions that seem to be affecting uh, some of the European countries in a way that uh, those countries are very unhappy about uh, and uh, are starting to reconsider maybe the American policy. Um, I've heard rumblings. I can't remember which countries. I think some of the Nordic countries some some of the European, smaller European Union countries, I think. And here we are, on the verge of all this chaos, just because some people who think they run the world in Washington, and to a great extent they could make the argument they do, uh, they just don't want to lose their place in the world. And they have been for, for uh, years now. 
perhaps even uh, a decade or more, the United States has been declining as a power in the world. Um, probably because of things like uh, the first and second Iraq wars. You know, at the height of our power, what do we do? We get a coalition together and we get involved in the first Iraq war, ostensibly to uh, help Kuwait, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more to the reasons, but it was a it was a it was a terrible, awful thing what they did. I mean, you, people can go back and look it up themselves. The, the the civilians that we harmed, that we devastated, even with the first Gulf War, is um, it's it's almost unimaginable at times. And behind Russia is China, and that would be a whole nother a whole nother video. I don't think anyone knows really what China has and what they can do. And I think that, um, you know, they better think long and hard about, um, to, you know, treating Russia and China in the same way that they've treated mm, Syria and Iraq and Libya, the same way that they're attempting to treat Iran, because it's just not going to work. And I know these other countries aren't perfect either. I know about that law that was passed in Russia about the internet, and I'm, I'm opposed to that. I think freedom on the internet is the way to go. But that doesn't mean that you attack them, because that's ridiculous, especially in our modern world. I mean, when did we become like this? The, the people that are in power now, look at, go back and think about how Eisenhower dealt with the world. Completely different. Even Nixon, when he was vice president, even president, <laughs> you know, to an extent. I mean, yes, there was his what he wanted to do in Vietnam and what people thought were outrageous at the time. But even but before that, especially during the the Eisenhower administration when Nixon was vice president, yeah, you just didn't behave like this. You just didn't behave like that. In fact, Eisenhower told when they went after the Suez crisis, he told them to cut it out. Go look that one up. He told Israel, Britain, and France to just cut it out. <laughs> you know? But here we are now, leading the rush, leading the call to uh, global war.